to Future State, Aquaman, issue one. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I'm skipping one. Future State, Batman, Superman, issue one. Jean Lin Yang writing with Ben Oliver uh, on the art. And I gave a nice little pause there for David, who edits these and splits them up for the other YouTube channel. I, uh, I was nice there and gave him a pause, so it was clean. I, I, I like the fact that you could have just carried on and just come back around, but but no. No, 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 no. Uh, we, we must do it in the order I have decreed. It is law. It is, it is written, therefore it shall be done. Uh, so this is, uh, I guess, kind of a first taste of the Batman Superman uh, mm -hmm. ongoing uh, when it returns, even though this doesn't feel like it's anything like what's been teased for for that first issue back. So more just uh, seeing how he handles the the pairing. Well, yeah, yeah. And and did you guys read his Superman back before Rebirth? Or was he on action? I, I, I did. It was Superman. I think he was on. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I, I liked it. I felt like, uh, you know, Rebirth kind of came through and derailed whatever he was doing, but he still took it in stride. And um, so I don't think I've ever read him write Batman before because he's done no, Terrific. Yeah, that's maybe, Superman. that's maybe a first uh, for so, that. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So this is, again, this is not set as far in the future as some of the other future state stuff. This is Batman and Superman are still operating uh, as Bruce and Clark. And oh. Batman is discovering, uh, well, I say Batman. Superman's more than discovers it. Uh, ba Batman's already dealing with stuff. Because uh, there's a little tease at the start that he, I actually kind of love this, that there's a, an infestation of rats that all have heat vision. So he's like dodging like all these blasts yep. of heat vision from rats. This is kind of the silly stuff that I love from Yang. We'll just he'll throw yep. in something so fun like that. Uh, but Superman, traditional sort of Superman scene where he actually saves a kid who's trying to commit suicide. He he jumps down and stops the train because the kid jumps out of the monorail. And I, I think you know Yang's handling of Superman's like voice is is good here. You know it's when he says, there. you know he says, uh, I hear him let out a sigh, not of disappointment but of relief. They're almost always relieved. Uh, you know that's a very mm -hmm. Uh, poignant little statement but it turns out this kid the reason why he, he wants to kill himself is because he, he took this this weird designer drug that alters how your face looks for a prank but the side effects so he, he wanted to i guess like a ram head um yep. for his but, school mascot yeah yeah but ever since he took it whenever he like starts to feel like emotions or feel embarrassed or something he actually starts to grow the horns again so now he thinks of himself as a freak uh, Superman takes him to Star Labs and discovers that it seems to be coming surprise, surprise uh, <laughs> from Gotham. Yeah, uh, right. Never so, heard that before. I know. So that leads him to Gotham, and he shows up and talks to. Him. And this is right when the magistrate's starting to commit to power because Batman's like, "Hey, you can't just show up unannounced. Like them seeing you here is going to cause a lot of problems." Mm -hmm. uh, so it becomes them, and we actually see that there's like regular like street thugs that are taking this drug. So we see like you know like a bird head and like a mouse head and. <laughs> all sorts uh down below and we get more of those uh the ed 209 i mean it doesn't look at like ed 209 but they're just ed 209 in function uh yeah these robots to show up but essentially they look into this drug the one of the girls down below that's using this to like attack the the the, the uh the drones and stuff uh, she's doing this because her father went missing and he was at a lecture at the, at the university and yeah. he actually turns out to be someone who's behind some of this stuff uh, at, at the hospital when they go and look into it um they find more people using this drug to have like m more extreme mutations where they're they've got like arms as well as their heads uh being all monstrous and i do kind of like the idea of the mastermind behind all this being mr toad and he's the head of the false face society yeah well false face so i just had to look that up real quick connor hey. hates this uh, he's been so Why? quiet I, I don't oh. hate it. I just <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you gush about it, and then I'll get to my problem. I don't want. I didn't want. Well, to just, I don't want to derail the flow. Of I'm not. I'm not so it. much gushing. Like, I, I like this quite a bit. I think this is a fun issue. I don't know how yeah, you feel I was, that. I was a little bit disappointed just because it's Yang, Superman, Batman, and it's, again, this didn't feel much like Future State, like, but not in the same way that the Mark Russell one did. This just feels like this could have been a Batman Superman issue, and then they threw the Magistrate in there, you know, like. Yeah, that's a fair statement. I, I guess know. if yeah, it feels maybe it'll be more relevant as it goes as we get to issue issue two. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. there'll be more of a reason why it ha the magistrate part of it's important. Um, but no, you're right. This could just be the next issue of Batman Superman, and there'd be I no. Mean, it's yeah. possible it was kind of written as that originally. Like maybe maybe they you know he he was taking over the book, and then it was oh hey future states coming. Could you yeah. retool those first couple of issues into this? And that's why mm -hmm. it's 
so close to the start, perhaps. I mean, that's yeah. not unfeasible. I actually kind of like the false face stuff, though, uh, as a yeah, concept. Yeah, so false face is usually identified with Black Mask, which I thought, you know, this is a nice new take on what, what that is. I don't know mm -hmm. if he's related to this, but you got excited over Mr. Toad, and I didn't remember him at all. So I, I Googled him, and apparently Mr. Toad used to run with Professor Pig. Um... As, as Sounds about character? right. Yeah, so like, I didn't remember that. At I all. am down for a team of villains that have all got animal themed things. I mean, but, like the terrible trio. Yeah, but like <laughs> specifically where they all have titles, so it's it's you know it's Professor Pig, Mister uh -huh. Toad, you know Doctor uh, Vulture. I don't know Potato Pig. Like <laughs> like they all have proper titles. Gotcha. I'm into I'm into that as a as a concept. Uh, what can I say? But I'm a man of simple uh, loves, but uh, we do. There's a tease that this this Doctor Toad is actually excited about the idea of getting his hands on Superman, and the big mm -hmm. cliffhanger at the end is that Superman's talking him down. Uh, he pulls out a kryptonite dagger and stabs Superman in the uh, yeah. the abdomen. So, um, I mean, I had fun with this issue. I I, I think it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe I'm in the minority here. I I probably enjoyed this a little bit more than Imperious Lex, but I mean, maybe I'm just. No, it's it's just it's fine. Like, I definitely, on a busier week, I think I would have been more upset, <laughs> than, you know, because it's... Uh, it, that was again, last it, week, Matt. That's fine. We're... <laughs> no, I know. So, um, but, like, again, I think the art's really good. I like Ben Oliver's designs for all the characters. Like, it looks great, you know? Mm -hmm. So if this is a taste of what Batman Superman's going to be like, you know, in Infinite Frontier, great. I mean, it's a good sign. So... But yeah, I think I just went into this with a little bit high expectations because of the creative team, and it was yeah, it's just it's good. I, I had kind of like a muted expectation across the board this week for I, I would say that's the Strange Adventures because that was like you know separate, but yeah. Future State wise, for some reason I was kind of in like a like oh it's yeah. the final week, None of, all the big ones have kind of came and went. This is kind of the week of the uh, leftovers. I, I, I tweeted the same where I, was, I had no enthusiasm for any of the books this week, and not that I expected all of them to be bad or anything, like because. Yeah, you know, I didn't really have strong expectations of anything, but I was just like, eh, you know, none of them were jumping at me. I was like, oh, I really want to read this one. I was just like, it, it, across the board, it was like, yeah, I guess I'll read them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when it comes to this one specifically, my problems, um, first off, I think the art is fantastic. I will, you know, mm -hmm. double down on that. I think it's great. Best part of the issue by far for me. I'm not a fan of Yang's voices for them. I think the inner monologue voices, I actually think are really solid. But the dialogue, I kind of don't like. Uh, there like, was you know, like there was one line of dialogue. Now you've brought it up. There's one line from Batman that felt a bit odd to me, where he says uh, something about selling drugs for ten dollars a pop, and I thought that was a weird line to come out of Batman's there's, mouth. There's a few, just like when, when <laughs> Superman first shows up there, he's like, "Hey, Batman, it's been a while," and he's like, "What are you doing? Get inside the Batwing now!" And I'm like, "All this, it, this dialogue just doesn't, it doesn't feel natural for this pair," uh, and. That's kind of a problem when they're the pair of the book. You know, it's their book, yeah. and I think in individually, I think he has a handle on them. Like I said, I think the inner monologue stuff, uh, all that Superman stuff at the start, you know, the the relief um, is really good. Uh, we get some of Batman's uh, inner monologue towards the end. I don't think there's anything stand out in that, but I think it's perfectly solid. But there are multiple times with the dialogue where I just felt like this just feels off. Like you know, and it's kind of bugging me throughout, and that that's kind of what took me out of the book. I think you know the idea of it is fine, the art's really good, but just too often there was a line of dialogue that just sounded off and took me out of it and kind of ruined my enjoyment of of a lot of the book. Unfortunately, fair enough. Yeah. I can't. I mean, I don't really feel that way. I had there was one or two odd lines of dialogue, like, but it wasn't anything like that for me. Where was, it was like was, constantly overbearing. There was like one where when the when the three thugs with the you know the the face change run away, mm -hmm. um, Superman just stands and goes. Some people do need masks, especially in Gotham. You're right, Bruce. I'm like, this this feels like a really forced, weird conclusion to come to now. Like after you were talking about like just a couple of you know set you know a couple of pages ago that oh, you know he, he you know he's he's angry he's where he's telling Bruce maybe he should give up his identity. But just things like that where it just it just didn't sit right with me. Hmm. Well. Lots of things don't sit right with Connor. Like, we're, we're all... uh, that's fair. Yeah. There, there wasn't a cross, so... Uh, you 
I hear Carter still looking for that cross to this day. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what are you rating Batman Superman, Matt? Uh, I'm going to give this a 6.5. All right, Carter. Uh, I'm going to give it a 5.5. And for the record, that cross was the beginning of the end of Tom King's Batman. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give it a 7, I think. Um, yeah, 